Baking your own bread at home not only can save you a whole lot of money, but it also ensures that you know what ingredients are going into the food that your family's eating. And the ability to take a loaf of bread and slice it up takes that loaf and turns it into something much more functional for making sandwiches, for making toast, for actually being able to utilize that loaf of bread. In this video, I'm going to review two completely different bread slicing machines. One that's super expensive, relatively speaking, and one that's super cheap. Let's see how they compare. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I'm going to be comparing two different bread cutting machines, systems, depending on how you want to look at it. One here and one here. This one here is made by Zassen House and it is something that I've had for several years. I love it. I've been very pleased with it. I've made a couple small modifications uh, on this unit. If you want to uh, see more about that, here's a link to a video that you can jump over to if you want to find out kind of what I did to this to kind of retrofit it to get it working better. But overall, I'm really happy with this one. This was sent to me recently. It's made by Picklohass. Picklohass. And uh, the reason I decided that I wanted to do this video review is because I mentioned I'm really happy with this unit, but there is one big downside with this unit and that is the price. The price of this unit is very high. Now that said, because it has allowed me to make very thinly sliced bread for many years and I don't have to buy bread from the grocery store to make sandwiches for my boy or for myself for that matter anymore, it has saved me more money than it has cost me. But there's a big investment to get into this type of bread slicer. So I wanted to compare it to this because this bread slicer is much less expensive. So when I was approached by the company and they asked me if uh, they wanted me or if I wanted to uh, do the review, I said, yes, I'd be interested in doing that because I know for a lot of people it's difficult to jump into this. So I wanted to see, you know, if they are comparable. Now I'm coming into this, as you can imagine, with a little bit of a bias because I really love this bread slicer, but you know, I'm going to give this one a really good shot and see if it is anywhere near comparable because the, the price difference between these, like this one is 10 times more expensive pretty much than, than this here. Now I do want to mention I'm using the knife that was sent to me by the same company, Pick Low Haas. Uh, I suggested they should send me a knife so I don't use my own like bad knife and then it seems like, oh, maybe your knife was lousy. So I'm using their cutting uh, tool and their knife uh, while I do this. And the bread that I'm going to be using is a loaf of bread that I baked this morning. This is kind of a crusty surface loaf of bread. When I picked out this unit here, I wanted to make sure that I had something that could cut through a uh, really thick crusty bread and cut through it thinly. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, cutting this loaf of bread in half using the Piccolo Haas knife. And I'm going to slice half of it with this and half of it with this. And we're going to be comparing kind of the quality of the cut and also to some degree the speed. Because one thing I like about this system here is that it's pretty fast. Maybe this one's going to be just as fast. So let's cut this bread in half. The knife works pretty well. That went right through. Oh, okay. Well, I got to say right off the bat, the knife is pretty good. Um, <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot better than the knife I usually use to cut my own bread. It went right through. It didn't uh, break off bits of the crust on the corner. Okay, well, their knife is good. Uh, in terms of durability and whether it's going to hold up over time, it feels like a well-made knife. It's got a full tang all the way through the handle there. Uh, I get the sense that this is a really good knife in terms of its durability, but that was a really, really uh, nice cut. It is a serrated knife, um, which is a little bit more of a pain in the butt to sharpen. Not that big of a deal, but you know, it's, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt than a non serrated knife, but that cut through that really, really easily. Uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit about their uh, device here. It has a, a little uh, locking unlocking pin on the side here, and it's got different uh, grades of thickness that you can cut. There's a half inch, three quarters of an inch and an inch. Uh, thickness options that you can uh, use when you're uh, cutting through here. It's kind of, uh, you, you got to make those quantum steps. It's not infinitely uh, uh, divisible. Uh, so it, it does it in um, quarter inch increments, but starting with one half inch, you can't do a quarter inch 
slice with this uh, system. It has a little area for cutting, I'm sorry, for collecting breadcrumbs, which uh, at the time of this recording, and I've never used it before, seems a little bit silly to me. Like, are they all really gonna go in there? I imagine they're gonna go everywhere, but I guess we'll find out. There's a little magnet over here for holding knives on uh, onto the device. I Maybe if you had a smaller knife, uh, the knife will, uh, kind of click right to there. I, this this big knife I think would fall right off of there But I guess it's kind of like a safety thing for when you're moving this around if you had a smaller knife It can click to the magnet um, as to whether that is valuable or not um, I guess it depends on what kind of knife you're using this knife here I feel like it would it would fall right off uh, This unit here is infinitely divisible. There's a little knob here and I can go all the way down to uh, Like a one millimeter thick uh, slice although I, I don't think I could actually pull that off with this uh, where I usually do uh, my slices of bread is maybe a little bit thinner than a, a half inch. Um, I, I usually do these, I don't know, maybe they're, well, just under a half an inch, somewhere in there. Um, uh, but uh, this one can uh, go open to about like three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to set this one for about a half an inch. So we're doing apples to apples here. And while I do this demonstration, I'm going to be playing for you a fresh new cut from Preptopia Records about a man in a love triangle with two bread slicing machines, and he can't decide which one he truly loves. Let's get going. We'll start with the uh, Zassen House. I'm going to cut half a loaf of bread with the Zassen House, and we'll have a timer while we go. Two plates on the counter. Set the mood just right One's a serrated edge Other smooth as silk Both got their charm And both could kill Red knife sharp and sleek Red slice of dancing swift Two tools in my heart Caught in this bread Tragic love triangle, man caught in between. Feel the tension. Rise. Okay, we're set with that one. I was able to cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices plus an end piece. Each one is you know, just a little bit under uh, half an inch thick. Uh, they cut through very easily. You know that's why I love this machine. Now we're gonna try the Piccolo Haas machine little uh, jig here and bread goes on the top and the way that you're supposed to run it is you kind of hold the bread down and you slice through it in an action like that so you know I will give it this is the first time I've ever used this maybe you develop a little bit more of a knack over time but you know we're gonna see how it goes and again with the uh, hot sexy grooves of Preptopia's new R&B release the tension rise in this twisted bread dream cut too deep I cry these tools make me bleed can't choose between them it's a love I need bread knife sharp and sleek bread slice that dance and swift two tools in my heart Caught in this bread twist Bread knife sharp and sleek Bread slice and dance and swift Two tools in my heart Caught in this bread twist Bread twist, bread twist All right, and we're done with that. Uh, I didn't get as many slices out of this one. Uh, they are thicker than we have over from the uh, the Zassen house. I had it the, the thinnest setting, but uh, just compare two typical slices of bread here. So this is the piece from the Piccolo house, and this is the piece from the Zassen house. And this one is quite a bit thinner. It's like maybe, this one's about maybe two thirds the thickness of this one. Uh, so you are able to get a thinner slice of bread from this unit. Uh, I did find that as I was cutting through it, uh, the, the knife was riding up a little bit. And I think that might be because of the way that the knife is sharpened. Uh, there's kind of a, a wedge shape on this side, which kind of wants to ramp it up. I suppose if I kind of did it in a left-handed direction, I might have been able to uh, 
to minimize that a little bit. So that particular uh, aspect to it where it kind of ramped up and made them a little thicker on one side than the other. If I ran the knife in an opposite direction, I think that would be a little better. Do you have to do it left-handed? I think, uh, yeah, you'd have to do it in a, you'd have to do it with your left hand, I think, to, uh, to get rid of that kind of, uh, that kind of ramping there. So uh, what did I get? I got uh, five pieces of bread on this plus the uh, crust on the end. And this one, again, I forgot the number was eight. Eight. So I got eight instead of five, and uh, and these are a little thinner. In terms of ease of use, it's very easy to use, and I think it really comes down to uh, to cost in the end. I think that the results you get from the Zassen House slicer, they are thinner, and they are something that would be, I think, for most people, better for a sandwich because it's thinner. Uh, you know, if I was going to take two uh, slices of this, you've got like an inch plus in thickness, so. The results, I think, are a little superior with the Zassenhaus slicer, but at the same time, you could buy 10 of these for the price of one Zassenhaus slicer. So maybe if you don't have the money to buy something like this right off, you could get something like this. And you know, if you can fly with sandwiches that are made with two pieces of bread that add up to you know about an inch and change, uh, and you can do that for a couple of years, you can take that money that you saved by not having to buy bread at the store, and you can you know save up that money and eventually maybe you can get something a little bit more expensive or maybe you know you're totally fine with this and and thick sandwiches are the like uh, are the way that you like to rock and roll, roll either way so there you go uh, there are the two units zass and haas i'm going to put a link down in the description below to this one i'll put a link down in the description below to this one i don't see them really as being competitors because from a price standpoint they, are, they just live in two uh, completely different environments. Uh, and uh, well, I love this one, you know, this one's not bad. If I, if I did not have the money to swing this one right off, I think I probably would go for this. It works really well. And as long as it's saving me from having uh, to buy bread at the grocery store, I'm gonna be saving money. And then I can put that towards other kinds of kitchen tools and items in the future. That's it, I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.